Coming up on Tech News Today, Google reveals augmented reality glasses are real. Well, sort of. It's a concept, but they're admitting it. Also, the Nokia Lumia 900 rocks the world. We'll tell you what the reviews are like. And Alaskans get cheap iPhones. So do Virginians and some Kentuckians as well. All that and more coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Wednesday, April 4th, 2012. Tech News Today is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to Squarespace.com and use offer code TNT4. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Maya Zaktar. I'm Jason Howell. And this is the show where we kick around the news and we say, tell us something interesting for once. News, will you? Like maybe a new phone? For instance, or <gasps> some juicy layoff news, or augmented reality, possibly augmented reality glasses. Let's go with those. Let's go with that. I like that one. Uh, the Google X Labs are real. In fact, they even went uh, right on to good old Google Plus and made public their secret initiative called Project Glass. Nick Bilton wrote it up in the uh, New York Times on his Bits blog. And uh, you can see a video if you go to g.co slash Project Glass. Now, before you get too excited or upset, either one, this is not an actual product yet. Uh, they, they say in their Google Plus uh, post, we took a few design photos to show what this technology could look like and created a video to demonstrate what it might enable you to do. Because as I were talking earlier today, we're like, you could easily fake this. I mean, it's, they haven't proved they've got it done. And they're basically saying, this is, this is not evidence. Don't, this, is, this is a concept. This is what we are working on, what we would like the glasses to do. And what they want you to do is either comment on this Google Plus thread or somehow in another way, let them know what you like about the concept and what you would want glasses like this to do. Well, I love this idea, although it's gotten a lot of attention. I think uh, the New York Times wrote it up first as far as, hey, we've got a real thing. We have Google images here. These are Google's images. These aren't from some obscure blog who says that this is what the glasses will look like. They definitely look cooler than what we first heard about Oakley type, where you sort of think of wraparound kind of ski glasses type of a thing. I think they look pretty awesome. But it doesn't sound like they're ready to, let's say, show them off at Google I.O. No, no, I don't think so. I think what they're what they're saying is we want we we want to get early in the process. What do you like about them? What do you when you say uh, some people are like, I don't want this. Why do you not want it? What could we do to make you want it? Right. If you look at it and you're like, that's idiotic. Why? I don't want to be walking through the Strand bookstore talking to myself about where the business section is or whatever it is I'm looking for, which is one of my reactions to the video. Uh, they want to hear that. They want to like, okay, how, how else could we figure out how to make this work so, so it would be easy for you and make you want to use it? Another, another interesting thing about this, uh, the Google Plus post was credited to Babak Parviz, Steve Lee, and Sebastian Thrun. Babak Parviz is also an associate professor at the University of Washington specializing in bio-nanotechnology, the fusion of tiny technologies and biology. He most recently built a tiny contact lens that has an embedded electronics and can display pixels to a person's eye. So that seems like it would f work perfectly, not only with these Google goggles, but possibly contact lenses. I just want this to work the way it does in the demo video. I mean, like, it's okay, I'm looking at something, it's identifying something. I would say, take a picture, takes a picture. But the idea of the contact lens concept, that seems so much further off than this concept thing that we're seeing now. I mean, the, the, like, like Sarah was saying, it looks. The glasses look really slick, and they don't look anywhere near as, as hideous as I was expecting. But we haven't seen it actually work. I mean, it'd be great if this if it works exactly the way they show it to, to work. Well, but that's what they're saying, Ayaz, is this is what we're thinking. What do you think? And you're saying, perfect, make it. I love this You thing. wouldn't change a thing? Well, I mean, there, there are a couple. Of, the fact that you could post socially with this kind of thing, that's instead of having to bring out your phone all the time. It's like what I'm looking at is what I want to show off. I liked seeing the subway notice. Like, oh, look, there's something actually, like, traffic information you should find out right away. There's also a lot of looking down. The video is a little perplexing to me. It's like, look up. Look up with your glasses. Why is everything? All right, here we go. 
I mean, you have to have some kind of image stabilization, so hopefully they build that in, too. I mean, there's there's a lot of things I like about this, although, I think Tom, you were wondering about what if you want the person to talk to you in the video chat? You can't see yourself that way. They're yeah. only going to see what you, outwards. When you're, when you're doing a two-way video call, like a Skype call. just look call, at your eye. The, the only video you can send is what is coming from the glasses, so you can't, unless you take the glasses off and point them at you, I guess. Well, um, but that's, I guess, a little bit more like you and I having a conversation. I'm not watching myself having a conversation with you. Yeah, but Ayaz is. So you can't send him the video of you. Oh, yeah, that's... Oh, you'd see, like, so if we... If you're uh, worrying, it's I'm, a one-wayer. Yeah. No, that's no good. That's you're, what I you're wa- gonna want see, changed. Like, you're going to see what... He's going to see what you're seeing, which is kind of a cool option. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that's nice, but, but you should have some... Op- you should have options, I'd I imagine it would there. pair with a phone or something. You could use your, One, you could use your phone for that kind of thing. You're going to hold the thing out. Or you could just Mirror. pair it... A mirror. Yeah. yeah. There's an idea. I also think you and I both say, hey, the, the design looks pretty cool, but not everyone's going to agree with that. There were some folks in chat saying, well, what if you already wear glasses? And Google says they're they're what they're wanting to address that. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of people wear glasses, and that particular style isn't going to work with people who are, are going to have another layer of glasses. So I would like to see something that's, I mean, maybe it's not going to be the most fashionable, but they should have a variety of options because, again, this is stuff that you are wearing. This is wearable technology, and how you look does matter. I want to know more about how you control it, too, right? The voice recognition makes Mm -hmm. sense, but I think that's terribly inconvenient. I don't want to be having to talk out loud a lot to control this thing. Uh, According to one of the articles I read, I think it was Nick Bilton's, you touch the top of the camera to take a picture. Uh, So that makes sense. That's easy. You Mm -hmm. know, just tap a a button to take a picture. But what about other stuff? that When when does it float up? When does it go away? How do you control when it floats up and goes away? How do you clear your screen when you're like, no, no, I'm driving. You know, get out of my face. I don't want to see anything right now. Also, I think one of, uh, I mean, something that has always been frustrating to me is you're at Yosemite and you see this beautiful vista and there's Half Dome and you're like, this is the most beautiful thing in the world. You take a picture and it doesn't look anything like what you saw because you don't have that Mm. that wide, you know, with your eye peripheral vision. So how that camera is going to factor into yeah. You're taking pictures of what you're seeing, but it won't look like that. They need to tap into your optic that. nerve directly, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do that. Yeah, we, need we, we need that's strange my, days. That's, that's what my we critique. need. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, something you can order today is not a concept at all is the new Nokia Lumia 900 out here in the U.S. on AT&T. Uh, we have a, uh, a review unit in-house. Alex Gumpel, our in-house Windows phone fan, has been using it, which is why there's a picture of our editor, Jeff Stewart, on the uh, wallpaper. They um, really like each other. Jason Mick from Daily Tech uh, says he got a notice from AT&T that his pre-order was delayed because they were out of stock. Now, I did a quick check on Amazon. They still showed it in stock there, although I didn't actually try to order it, yeah. so maybe I would have run into the same thing. Uh, but implying that it's selling well anyway. Tech Republic did a teardown. A lot of the reviews are rather lukewarm on it. They don't, they're not trashing it, but they don't love it. And Tech Republic says, well, it's got a good, not great display. It's got a single core processor. It's got an average amount of RAM, less storage than competitors, 16 gigs, less battery life than competitors. So it's just, it's not exactly the best piece of hardware. And it's, it's got the same Windows Phone operating system that other Windows Phone Phones have but it's also a hundred dollars. If it was four hundred dollars, people Bingo. would be mad. Yeah. For a hundred dollars, it's like, hey, you're getting something pretty nice for what you pay for. Right? And actually, six ninety nine unlocked is not outrageous, but that subsidy bringing it down to a hundred dollars that's an incredible subsidy. It's only got a four eighty by eight hundred four point three inch screen, but according to Jessica Dahlcourt at CNET. Raymond Sonera, president of DisplayMate Technologies, did some examinations on the screen and found out that it uses circularly polarized glare suppressing optics to get that thing that Microsoft is calling or that Nokia is calling clear black. I think it's so you get a really like, nice sharp sc- looking screen here. I think they said it had something like forty percent less glare than say an iPhone, which is amazing if that's if that's actually the case enhance <laughs> can't enhance any more than that sorry yeah <laughs> so i i don't know I, I i think it's a i you know i like the windows phone operating system josh topolsky in his video review said i love the design but i'm disappointed in how it works because of the operating system he's like i'm tired of giving windows phone a pass it's not a newbie anymore it's been around mm-hmm. it needs to step up although i thought some of his criticisms of the operating system are criticisms i could have of android or ios as well, things things like scrolling not always working perfectly, or or you know the inability to to actually get true multitasking. He was complaining that you know apps seem to go 
back to a splash screen every time you relaunch them. I have that happen on iOS a lot. Well, considering Nokia's partnership with Microsoft, they should have the best experience you can possibly get on one of these phones. And if, and if that's the flagship and they didn't bother to put in you know, the latest processors and the latest technology in it, and it still has the same bugginess that Windows Phone has in general, it seems strange that, they, that Nokia didn't have a better flagship phone. This is, this is supposed to be the killer thing for Microsoft. This is the thing that's supposed to go, Nokia is for real again. Now, you know, this is, this is the way it's supposed to be. And if they can't work together to make it work well, why is that note up there? Uh, if they can't work together to, make it, to work, make it work well, I'm just confused by this whole thing. Why not have the best dang phone out there if you're working together with the software manufacturer? Well, because you're still trying to get more of the market back from Android and iOS. And I think this is what you see as a compromise. The companies say this is something that people won't hate and it's affordable so that we might sell a bunch. And they did. They sold out of pre-orders, right? Uh, well, that's what Daily Tech thinks. I, I, like I said, I looked on Amazon. I found it still in stock. Sure. So I'm not sure. But um, $99. That's its, that's its key feature, mm -hmm. I have a feeling. All right. Let's move on to Yahoo. Finally dropping the other shoe and uh, announcing the layoffs. 2,000 workers. 2,000 workers are gone. Yahoo currently employs about 14,000, and they're going to have 2,000 less. It's going to save them $375 million bucks annually, but they have to pay up some money in severance, about $125 to $145 million pre-tax. And then Yahoo's going to explain some more details on the 17th with its financial call. Now, in their statement, they said, our goal is to get back to our core purpose, putting our users and advertisers first. Obviously not their uh, employees, and we are moving aggressively well, no, to that's achieve. Unfair. I'm uh, kidding. Uh, uh, companies have to lay. And out. to achieve that goal, unfortunately, reaching that goal requires a tough decision to eliminate positions. Now, if you take a look at how how they've grown over the past couple of years, back in 2000 uh, was it 2003, they had like 5,000 employees, and that ballooned up to 14,000 over the course of uh, several years. 2007 is when they first hit that, and they've been paring back a little bit, but they're back to 14,000 employees. So they need to cut a bunch of people to figure out, look, we need to focus on our, our bottom line, and they need to you know, focus a bit. Well, it's not even just about the bottom line. It's also about focusing on certain parts of the business. Uh, as we mentioned uh, when we talked about uh, Kara Swisher's article about this, they want to get out of supporting advertising and search engine because they've outsourced that to Microsoft. Bing operates all of that for them now. Uh, we still don't know what's going to happen to those particular units, uh, but a lot of these 2,000 people are in the, the product division. So they are doubling down on media. They are saying, look, we're, we're going to you know really focus on certain parts of our business and we're going to let other parts go. Uh, they're they're in, retr in retrenchment, and they the thing is they've been in retrenchment for a long time. So I, I saw a few articles saying like ah, so Scott Thompson is trying the same strategy that every previous Yahoo CEO has tried, which is cutting down, cutting back, and focusing. There's no well, reason we'll to believe this is going to work better this time. Twenty five hundred workers to uh, to make up for the yeah. workers that they laid off, and then some. I don't think that'll happen though. I, I think Yahoo. More than ever, it's very much like a do or die scenario. And he knows that. He knows it's awful to have to lay off thousands of people, but it's still only 40% of the people that they still employ, and they have to start focusing. Yeah, and uh, you know it's it's going to be a pretty darn awful day at Yahoo, and you're going to have a huge morale problem there for mm -hmm. a long time. Time. Well, and they say that. Well, they say a lot, but the 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 rumor is that this is just the first round. Yeah, that's so. true. There 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 are indications that they're not done yet. So uh, it's going to get darker before it gets to be dawn for Yahoo. Yeah. If I could abuse the metaphor. Sure. Let's let's move on. This is a, this is a sad. Let's talk about something happy. Squarespace.com, our sponsor, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. Uh, you're starting a small business out there, or you you know a small business that you want to help out. Squarespace gets you up and running, looking professional, easy, and with all the modules and plugins that can do everything you want to do in a website. Uh, if if I you know I've mentioned this before, if you like a business and they're like I don't have a website, you can create one for them for free. On Squarespace, no credit card needed. Get one going. Hand it over to them. Give them the keys. And you're like, well, but, you know, if they don't really know websites, well, Squarespace is really easy. And you're like, no, 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 you don't understand. This business that I was thinking about doing this for, they really don't understand computers. Squarespace not only gives you 24-7 online special support, but they're also offering free live webinar classes 
to help you get the most out of your blog. So it, it can work for almost anybody you can imagine. Uh, try it out right now. No risk. As I said, no credit card needed. And if you do decide to keep it or if the, the person you're designing it for decides to keep it, use our offer code TNT4 and get 10% off your first purchase on new accounts. So that's either 10% off your first month, or if you buy a whole year at once, you get 10% off the entire year. They've just redone their prices, so go take a look at all the new prices they have there. Uh, Squarespace is the place to go if you want a good-looking, reliable, easy website that helps you look good online. And you don't have to take our word for it. Try it for free, squarespace.com. We thank them for their support of Tech News Today. Happy anniversary, Larry Page. Larry Page, uh, one year ago, took over as CEO. Wow, has it already been a year? Yeah. It, it well, sure doesn't seem like it, does it? No. It seems like just a few months ago. Time uh, flies when you're in news. Steve Levy, uh, who wrote In the Plex, kind of one of the definitive books about Google, wrote a column about uh, Page's first year on Wired. And Larry Page himself sat down with Bloomberg Businessweek. And had a little discussion. Some of the things he said, uh, he thinks Google Plus is going better than he expected. So he obviously... Had low expectations. Well, what he was saying is this is a long-term project. Mm -hmm. We do long-term thinking at Google. So we don't expect something to necessarily be gangbusters right out of the gate. He also, though, said, for example, I have over one million followers. Or, you know, one million, over a million yeah. people have me in circles. You're the Google CEO. Yeah, exactly. You're, You're not better. exactly the average test case here. You're on the recommended list. <laughs> yeah. He said, feeling. even a few people have more than me. Like Britney Spears. Yeah, right. He was <laughs> I mean, also on kind of a funny. Uh, thing to he say. he said uh, they asked him about the uh, the lawsuits, uh, the things going on with Android and and Apple suing not Google directly, but but Samsung, Motorola, etc. Uh, he he pulled the Google party line and was like, you know, we don't think it's right to extend your business through a bunch of lawsuits. We think that's, you know, companies in decline pull that, not companies who are new and innovating. Uh, and he said, we have somehow been successful without suing other people over intellectual property. I, as you're laughing. I'm cracking up about that because they, they're so patent poor. That's why they bought uh, Motorola in the first place. Or they're mm -hmm. trying to buy it because they couldn't sue anybody. No, he bought Motorola because he likes to have new toys. That's oh, what that's, he said. That's right. Not not to get the, the what was it, 12,000 patents that right. Motorola's got. That he said they got lots of patents. Patents about search out the wazoo. Well, yeah, because, you know, that, that, that's where the problem is right now, not Android. But well, that problem. was him skirting the question, yeah, right? Really Someone was. said, what, that is, is that why you bought Motorola? And he's like, well, no, we already had our own patents, but we don't even like thinking about that. <laughs> that's for companies in decline. We're all about innovation. We don't, we don't sue other companies. The dispute with Apple, he said, I think the Android differences were actually for show. He, he says Apple just does that. Uh, he said, I had a relationship with Steve Jobs. I wouldn't say I spent a lot of time with him, but I saw him periodically. Uh, actually, he requested... A meeting with me. He sent me an email and said, hey, you want to get together and chat? This was after he took over as CEO. Uh, and of course, Larry Page said, yeah, I'll, I'd love to chat. And he said they had a very nice talk. So I and I, I have no reason to believe that he's lying about that. And I, and I think he's right that a lot of times these disputes between companies, we tend to anthropomorphize more than they are. And Steve Jobs was the kind of person who would feed that fire and say, yeah, I'm going to bury him. I'm going to you know, sue him with my last breath, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because that was the kind of rhetoric he put. But I don't think there really is actual bad blood. I don't think if no. Tim Cook and Larry Page walk into a restaurant that one of them would turn around and storm out. It's probably like, you know, it's a powerful motivator. I mean, Jobs did that with like his own Mac teams where he'd separate them and have them compete. So the idea is you come up with a villain and you're like, we're going to crush them. And then your team works harder, extra hours, and they do all kinds of things they probably wouldn't do anyway. So it's always good to have one rival out there go, yeah, well, well let's pick on that one there. Well, they certainly have uh, confused a lot of people who are either on an iOS or Android side who post in tech blog comments regularly because they certainly think that there's a big fight, a big uh, war. He also has arranged to have his top executives work in the same room. So it's not a meeting. This is an interesting uh, experiment. You work in the same room for a few hours every week, and he says it helps keep everyone on the same page. He stole it from Mayor Bloomberg in New York who has a bullpen session, same sort of idea. So you don't call them an unproductive meeting where everybody has to sit around. You say, you know what, a couple hours a week, all you guys, just do your work, bring your laptops, but be around each other, which may sound stupid, right? It's easy to mock that, but think how much more you get done with people when you're near them and you can just like, hey, you know what, I, I got a question or let me bounce this idea off you. It, it oh, keeps that communication going. This is on the executive level, right? So this, yeah. this is like the big wigs talking to each other. So that's a, a pretty interesting idea, using this kind of method to get 
just a free communication because otherwise you're what sending IMs, emails, talking through secretaries, or just never talking to each other mm -hmm. at all. It's that serendipitous stuff too. Mm -hmm. On top of that. All right, uh, U.S. carriers getting the iPhone do not include T-Mobile, but coming up on April 20th, uh, if you live in Virginia, Entelos is getting it. Uh, if you live in Alaska, Alaska Communications and Matanuska Telephone Association are getting it. Those are both CDMA carriers. GCI in Alaska, GSM carrier is getting it. And if you live in Kentucky, Appalachian Wireless is getting it. And Wisconsin, Cellcom is getting it. So not only are they getting the iPhone, they're getting the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 4 at $50 less than you would pay if you get it from AT&T, Sprint, or Verizon. We don't know exactly how they're doing the fifty dollars deal, right? We don't know if Apple's subsidizing it or like or the Usually carriers taking the loss. Usually, it's the carrier that subsidizes yeah. these prices, yeah, yeah. but since it's across the board with rural carriers, it may be possible Apple's giving them a break. I, I wonder don't if know. they're just trying to get these phones out because I mean the rumor is now what June that the iPhone's going to show up or like or September. Those are usually the two Even months. Even if it is September, they still want to move. As Apple many doesn't as seem possible. to be saying they have a problem selling the phones. Yeah, so. well, I mean, this is the old stock, right? This is what's going to be gone in a couple a couple of uh, months. I'm just kind of curious: would you buy? Would you get one of these phones now? This is like it's kind of a bad time. You know what? If I'm in one of these areas that has not had the ability to have an iPhone before, I'm buying it now. I don't care because that next one may not be available. So it, this is your first iPhone in some in some of these. Right. Cases. This isn't even like oh my iPhone dropped and do I want to replace it mm -hmm. or do I want to just deal for the next three months? It's exciting if that's if that's the phone you've always wanted and for whatever reason you have to use one of these carriers. And and if you're wondering, why isn't T-Mobile getting it? Well, if you give it to T-Mobile, you're putting the iPhone in competition with Sprint, Verizon, and AT&T because they all have overlapping areas. These rural areas don't have that kind of problem. In fact, these are areas where Apple can say, hey, we, we didn't have the ability to sell to these customers before because the iPhone wouldn't work necessarily in their area. And, and now we can get them right with their own regional carrier. And some people are, are loyal to that. Interesting note here, GCI, because they're a GSM carrier, will also get the 3GS because the 3GS did not mm -hmm. have a CDMA uh, model. And that one will be free on contract. So it's free like, iPhone in Alaska. Well, it's a 3GS, but still. Free, free. GS. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to take a page from Larry Page's book. Uh, pun unintended in that case. <laughs> uh, and you tell me, chat room, who did a uh, better job on stories today? Me, I, as or Sarah Lane. Sarah Lane, tell us about the Fisker Atlantic competition. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, well, the New York Auto Show started today. And being the car nut that I am, I was very excited to hear about Fisker Automotive unveiling something they like to call the Atlantic. Uh, this is a four-door sedan. It's going to run about $50,000. It was formerly known as Project Nina. If you're like, what? I've never heard of this, but I have heard of Project Nina. It's now called the Atlantic. And this is Fisker's Automot uh, Fisker Automotive's attempt to get into more of a realistically priced car for consumers who are, who are interested in in electric cars, but it's not the first time that they've gone about this. This is the second vehicle. Um, this California-based company, their first was Karma. You might remember this was released in 2008 for $108,000, so more than twice as much. These are Tesla-level pri prices, right? They, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, even the Atlantic is 50, 50 grand. Is It's cheap at 50 grand. You're finally getting yeah. into yeah. the area where people mm -hmm. say, well, you know, maybe I care enough to put a little bit more investment in in order to save money after the fact. Both are plug-in hybrids. They're both gasoline and electric power based and both tout extended range travel using only electric power. You can kind of flip the switch almost to go into gas mode if you need to. Uh, now, Fisker is still choosing where to build their cars. They say this is the model that we can we can build on a larger scale because... China. Well, it might have to be China, really? actually, because it depends on where they get their investment from. The company has already taken in one billion from private sources, but they also had a deal with the Department of Energy. They were going to get a loan from them, and they were all set to start manufacturing these cars at a plant in Delaware this summer. However, they didn't meet certain production milestones, and the, and the DOE said, nope, we're yanking your loans. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. So they're like, okay, well, now, depending on who gives us the money, we might make these cars anywhere, including overseas. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily a lot of American jobs here, but still, the the Atlantic is on track um, to be built. It's a nice-looking car. I, it's, I mean, they call it a four-door sedan. It looks a little cramped in that back area, but there are doors. It looks like a Mitsubishi Galant. It, it does have a familiar kind of sporty with a little bit of a backseat type of like a thing It looks like what I used on. to get at the, when I'd rent a car and I'd upgrade, you know, they'd upgrade you at the counter. 
because nobody wanted that car. So they're like, hey, do you want the, the uh, sports upgraded car? car for the, as you know, only $10 more a day? Yeah, I, I guess. And maybe I'm overthinking this just because I do so much commuting. But I feel like electric cars that don't have to go really long distances on a day-to-day basis are perfect for commuters. You know, you, you buy a lot less gas. You don't have to worry about uh, your car dying halfway to work and back. But I also feel like being comfortable because you have to sit in your car all the time is really, really big deal. No, no. It's about how you look. It doesn't it's look, not, though. It doesn't look anything like a Mitsubishi Galant. I'm looking that up again because I'm pretty sure that's not even close to it. It looks more like a Jag, if anything. And the thing is, with these cars, now this is supposed to be a luxury car. That's the other reason why it's yeah. $50,000. But... I am so sick of electric cars looking like these little bubble things, okay? So, like, I like the idea that what Tesla and Fisker are trying to do, it's an attractive-looking vehicle. It's like, okay, well, I don't know why they put four doors on the thing. I guess if you, you're you rich and you're like, I have a family, I'm going to throw people in the back who are going to be very, very cramped. Well, you know, you got groceries. You can you don't have to put your front seat forward yeah, and stuff them in the back seat. It's, I think it's it's a it's a nice design, and whether they can you know find the funding to make it a reality, it's something, I mean, I guess it's still, a, it's a step forward because the first one was $100,000. Know, yeah, cut just to 50, over. If you cut to the 50, that's not so bad. Maybe the next one could be down you know, maybe around 28. It's also really important that these come out of the assembly lines. I mean, darn near perfect. The Karma, which was Fisker Automotive's first car, um, mixed reviews. They had some battery issues. Consumer Reports tested the Karma earlier this year and said the car wouldn't start. It turns out that there was a production glitch in their batteries that they were getting from a manufacturer. Customers had complained that the weight of the Karma is it's really heavy, took away from some performance. Um, then again, the company expects to sell around 4,000 Karmas this year. Um, and that's for that's for the expensive model. So it's they're still trying to prove that they can make a car that more than four thousand people are going to buy in the year, and will be go- a good investment for all the folks who have given them one billion dollars so far. I hope I hope they can do it. All right. Uh, lots of car news this week because of New York Auto Show. So we we might have a few more of these kinds of stories. We'll keep an eye eye out. Let's move on to the news views. Next Issue Media launched its all-you-can-read magazine app. Uh, Some people call it a Netflix for magazines. For a flat fee of either $10 or $15, uh, you'll be able to read 32 titles. What's the difference between the $10 and the $15? You'll be able to read 32 titles, including Fortune, Sports Illustrated, and The New Yorker, among many others. The app works on Honeycomb or Ice Cream Sandwich with displays of at least 7 inches. The company expects to have an iPad app submitted in a few weeks and to add more titles later this year. You get extra titles with the fourteen ninety nine to get Entertainment Weekly, People, Sports Illustrated. So you still order. can only read 32 titles for $15, but the quality of the titles goes up? It looks like it. Mm. It's like the, the cool edition for $15. So it's not you like get Netflix that New Yorker yeah. and the swimsuit it's edition like of Sports Illustrated. Want to sound snotty at the, t- at the party? <laughs> <laughs> pay 15 bucks. Google's just signed a deal that will bring it nearly 500 Paramount Pictures movies to YouTube and Google Play in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, quite the change for Paramount, as its parent company, you might remember, Viacom sued YouTube for $1 billion just five short years ago. Google now has deals with Warner Brothers, Universal, Sony Pictures, and Lionsgate, the sole holdout, Fox. China's firewall that blocks out all kinds of sites just got updated. Swedish researchers have found that it is now more difficult uh, for citizens to stay anonymous via Tor. However, the researchers say that tools like Obs Proxy, which is short for like Obs, like obfuscation and you. proxy, those can, are hard words to right, mash, put them together. Mash up. It can be a workaround for the firewall. So if you want to still use that, you can. The Web 2.0 Summit will not be held this year, so we can bring you the following convention instead. Actually, I don't know what that would be, but the event. Uh, which has been held annually since 2004, is now on hiatus, not entirely canceled. John Battelle, uh, who's the main organizer of the event, announced that he could not put together a conference this year because he's currently working on a book and his partners at O'Reilly and UBM Tech Web also could not find the bandwidth to put this together. So they decided to just not do one rather than do a crappy one and uh, look at possibly getting back together and doing another one in the future sometime. They got to call it something else. I think there's something wrong with the the branding of it. It feels a little antiquated. And they just don't want to go Web 3.0. Because everyone will laugh at them. Yeah, exactly. So they couldn't, you think they just couldn't figure out a name? (laughs) They need a year. (laughs) We're going to get it, though. The next Web.
Yeah, there Wait, is already then, a conference. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, yeah. that is a that conference. Be perfect, though. <laughs> Leaked earlier today, Sprint and HTC officially launched the HTC Evo 4G LTE. That sounds like an SNL skip, but that's actually what it's called, which is pretty much a rebranded HTC One X, but with a kickstand. Yay! The phone runs ice cream sandwich. Uh, it's under the HTC's Sense 4.0, so it's a variant of it. Powered by a 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm dual core Snapdragon S4, has a 4.7 inch screen, will cost $200, and is available quarter two of this year. Pre sale starts on May 7th. Now, it's also going to have HD voice capability, which is something they have in Europe, a high quality voice you know a lot of people complain like why doesn't anyone have a phone that actually sounds good when you talk on it the problem is that won't roll out until later this year on sprint so even if you get it you might be able to use it on some 3g areas but it's it's not going to be fully capable until later and it's an lte phone which sprint doesn't even offer lte service yet and we're not even sure exactly when their lte service is going to be flipped on so if you buy this you're, you're, you're investing buying for the in the future. future. Yep. I can't wait to see the promo material. HTC Evo HD. Well, no, sorry. Evo 4G LTE with like multiple asterisks with HD voice. <laughs> anyway. And Beats. And LTE. By Dre. Uh, that's right. Don't forget Beats. <laughs> Minecraft developer Nosh revealed his next game will be called Zero Times Ten to the Sea. And it's an MMO set in a parallel universe in the far future around the year 281 trillion and takes place in space. The game continues even if you're not logged in. The game itself is about managing a ship that has a generator with limited wattage. Everything on your ship needs power, and you'll need to manage what gets powered and for how long. The European Parliament's Civil Liberties Committee approved a law that would make attacks on IT systems a criminal offense in the EU Tuesday. Distributing or possessing hacking software also becomes an offense under this law. These crimes are punishable by jail time of at least two years. Uh, the law also makes companies liable for cyber attacks committed for their benefit. Distributing or possessing hacking software. I'm very curious exactly how the law is going to define hacking software since it's the same as security software in most cases. The internet is all abuzz with the hottest new app ever to come to Android. And I'm not actually talking about Instagram. We're talking about Swift Key 3 Beta. It's a keyboard app. Rafe Needleman called SwiftKey's predictive typing abilities uncanny. It uses both dictionary words and your typing history to guess what you're about to type next. And if you're one of the company's VIP users, you can try it out for free. Both tablet and phone versions are available, and the app normally costs about $4. Just real quick on that. Yeah. Um, I'm a hugely uh, devoted SwiftKey user. We're actually going to have uh, the CEO of SwiftKey on the next All About Android. We're going to interview him about this, so Excellent. check it out next Monday. Cool, cool. A new online university is on the horizon, and it plans to be on the level of elite schools like Harvard and Yale. The Minerva Project is building Minerva University, which will be staffed with, quote, the world's most inspirational and engrossing professors. So if you're a sucky professor, forget it. If you want to be a student there, you'll have to meet, quote, the world's most demanding intellectual standards. So if you're dumb, forget it. Uh, so the project has so far raised $25 million bucks and plans to launch in 2014. Let's check out what's in the randomizer. Randomizer. Oh my gosh, it's a Bravo reality TV show. OMG. And before you stop listening to the show, it's produced by Randy Zuckerberg. Now we know what she, why she left Facebook. Right. She, she of... She of, of being Mark Zuckerberg. to Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, sister. Uh, so this is coming, what, in the summer... I can't, I can't remember. I can't remember when it's actually coming to Bravo. Yeah, Bravo has a teaser video um, that shows this. Uh, oh, we got to play this with sound up, oh, okay. uh, Jason, uh, if, especially yeah, for the yeah, audio the people. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, this I is. Had it, I had it cued. It's a got a little bit of junk here. It's not yeah, it's easy part of a, a kind of a coming to Bravo, the shows you love. Yeah, it'll be right after this, leading up here in a second. Being a geek is like being the new rock stars. Bravo's following these hot young professionals with big dreams on the road to becoming techie superstars. Mm -hmm. Some of the brightest minds in the world are right here. Silicon Valley is high school, but it's only the smart kids, and everyone has a lot of money. On Silicon Valley. That's exactly what. You what I experience want. here. Oh, my gosh. First of all, being a geek is being the new rock star. Well, I guess we're all, I mean, everyone Woo! watching the show can agree, right? It's we're the life. It's rock stars. Our heroin habit. Also, I love the whole, it's like high school, except we're all super rich. Well, that's not true that's either. That's true of all in of fact, us. In fact, that's the whole point of people who, they said they're trying to make, like, make it in the big Silicon Valley. I'm sorry, this whole thing has me all riled up. Uh, if you're trying to make it, 
then you don't already have a lot of money or you're just some privileged person who might not even deserve to get your next project funded anyway. And you're on a reality show. So who in the right mind as an investor is going to take you seriously? And I'm sorry, I'm not saying it's not going to be a good show and not going to be entertaining to watch, but doesn't sound like real life in the slightest. Well, this killer was, I only heard the promo. It was coming off of Tom's computer and I was like, that's, that's a parody, right? It's like, no, that's a real <laughs> show. It just sounded like exactly what you would see on SNL or some other sketch comedy show. I was like, yeah, sure, this is what this is going to be a show. Right. It's real. Okay, well, good luck with that. You know, there obviously, if you could have blogs like Gawker exist, you've got the kind of material available in Silicon Valley to make a reality show. So I don't, I don't think it's crazy for Bravo to do this, but I, I think you bring up some interesting <laughs> points of like, who thinks this is a good idea? And, and what do they not have left to worry about? They're like, nothing to lose. These kinds of shows are created so that people can drink too much and act badly and become a topic of conversation for weekly gossipy mags for a couple months, and then that's it. I mean, that's it's fluff. It's, it's candy. It's candy TV. Disposable. It's just, yeah, it just doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't jive with, I think, the whole uh, entrepreneurial spirit at all. Yeah. All right, let's check what's on the calendar. Speaking of entrepreneurial spirit. Speaking of that, on this day in 1975, Bill Gates and Paul Allen formed a partnership. I don't know what they did. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, did it go anywhere? Well, like, they might still Was be a band? thinking about some... Yeah. They're wireframing some ideas. <laughs> they're still working. They're still yeah, it takes a long time. Yeah, they have no, the long-term uh, thinkers. Right. Yeah, so uh, congrats, guys. You've had a had a long friendship. Dropbox wants you to spread the word about cloud storage. So now you're going to get 500 megabytes with up to a maximum of 16 gigabytes for referring friends. So 500 megabytes for each friend. Exactly. But I, can't, I can't get more than 16 You can't gigabytes. get you know yeah. unlimited, uh, but you can go up to 16 gigabytes. And if you're a pro user, uh, you will get one gigabyte per referral up to a limit of 32. I use Dropbox professionally, so please give me a gigabyte. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I mean, it's uh, it's I've been seeing this in my Twitter feed all morning. People saying, you want if you haven't signed up for Dropbox, at least use my link and then we get some more storage. Finally, the gathering, a Norwegian land party extravaganza, starts today and runs uh, through Sunday, uh, April 8th, at the Viking Skippet, something like that, uh, Olympic Arena in Hamar, Norway. And they're trying to set a new world record for the fastest internet access in the universe with a 200 gigabit per second connection. The current record is 120 gigabits per, spec per second, which was achieved by the Dream Hack Festival in Sweden, Ooh. which is actually in the Guinness Book, Book of World Records as the biggest land party. Yeah. So you can, the Norwegians, you're going to take the Swedes. that, Sweden. Yeah. Norway's trying to steal your a thunder. A nice, healthy rivalry. I say bring it. I said steal your thunder because Thor. Anyway, let's check what's incoming. <laughs> incoming message. I got a voicemail about a new way of selling toothpaste in Canada. Hey, guys. The very first uh, QR code store in Toronto has opened. Uh, it's a website called well.ca, W-E-L-L.ca. And the idea is they put it in one of the most densely populated uh, foot locations in Toronto. And you just walk by the store. If you want something, you scan the code, and it's delivered to you. Whether it's going to work or not, eh, because they already have a website <clears throat> where you order stuff and have it delivered, but I guess they have nothing to lose by trying. Hopefully it'll work. Bye-bye. <sighs> yeah, Well is like a, a, an online Walgreens in Canada, it looks like. Um this is, I guess, kind of, I mean, I don't know. I guess if I'm, if it's in the right place where I'm just standing around waiting and I'm like, oh yeah, and you know, this I do is, need some toothpaste. This is something that's working in Japan. It's yeah. Like train stations. Oh yeah. People are going grocery shopping just by standing there. They, and I can see that in train station. Definitely. Uh, I think it's odd that, they, I mean, it looks like a virtual store. I mean, it looks like a, a store shelf. So, but there's multiple items of like tied up there. That's total psychology, right? Because you if you only familiar. see one. You don't, it doesn't catch your eye as much. But if you see three or four, like, oh, they have a lot of Tide. Okay. You know, it's a picture. Psychologically, you're going to think that. Yeah, and there's, there's, there's still something to, you know, just going up and seeing stuff instead of going through a web page. I don't want to take to... the last one. <laughs> <laughs> don't take a picture of that with your, with your camera. No, no. 
It'll be gone. Who says they don't want to take the last one? That's, that's what. A, that's me being like, yes, the last one. Well, some of us are less sociopathic than others, so. <laughs> I, don't, I don't screw anybody over. I just don't want it to be empty. That's all. Right, right. Do you think people would fight over which one gets the QR code? I want that one, not this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't take that. Oh, no, no, I'm going to scan it before it's out. There is something kind of funny about the idea of QR coded products being displayed on a big wall. Uh, larger than life of the actual product. Well, times. are they larger? That's a good question. They seemed larger, at least in the pictures maybe, maybe that we the saw. Maybe people are just very small. <laughs> right. I don't know. Little people in Toronto train <laughs> stations, yeah. obviously. Torontitos. Uh, okay. Well, I, I, I'm, in, I'm into this. I, I hope this makes its way to the U.S. Yeah. I can see this, especially, like you say, in a, in a train station or airport. Mm-hmm. Anywhere, anywhere where yeah. you're just waiting around and you got nothing else to do. Exactly. QR codes never scan right for me anytime I try them, though. So hopefully well, maybe that, if you have your Google Glasses, you can just look down. Yeah, there you go. You combine it. Right there. I like that. All right, that's it for this edition of Tech News Today. Thank you, folks, uh, for watching or listening. Thanks for going into our subreddit, technewstoday.reddit.com, and letting us know what kinds of stories you would like us to cover each day. Uh, if you vote them up, vote them down, uh, it helps us determine what we put into the show each and every day. I will not be here tomorrow because I will be uh, taking the day off which I always do on the opening day for baseball. Uh, But I will, in fact, be on the last Buzz Out Loud at CNET tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. I'm getting played off by Jason. Sorry, I I thought you were doing it. Twit.tv slash TNT (laughs) is the place to find us on the web. You can email us at twit.tv or give us a call, 260-TNT-SHOW. It's good. I'd get too wistful. Yeah, I don't want you to tear up, Tom. John Strickland tomorrow. See you then. Play him off. Sorry. I mean, what's he playing? It's about Buzz Out Loud again. Turn him off.